Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Menu Trinidad, and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas, you only live once, and you join me on the strip where I have to quickly update you with where I am and what's happened. So, here's the situation, as many of you may be aware, there is no post-end game in Fallout New Vegas. By doing the dam last week, the game put me straight into the end cutscene and the credits, and then I just kind of was prompted to reload an earlier save file. So what I did was I reloaded the save file literally just before I went to the dam. So I had, uh, so I lost all the weapons and experience and so forth that I picked up by going to the dam. But I want to play this as if it was a continuation of the dam. I'm not kind of resetting or anything. So what I'm going to say therefore is obviously I've still got 260 out of 445 uh, maximum possible hit points. But I wanted to get all the experience from the dam, minus that big chunk of a thousand you get just for completing the game. Because you never actually get to see or use that, so I think it's unfair. So what I've done is I've gone around doing some very easy quests. Quests like a uh, talent pool, like classic inspiration, like most of um, Wan Dang Atomic Tango, whatever that quest is called exactly. So I've done a few of those to get my experience up a little bit. I think actually I've overshot the experience I was at at the very end of the dam by about 100 experience points. So I forgot just how many experience points flipping... Uh, talent pool gets you. So I've just done a few things and that also means I've got a ton of money. So right now I've got all the equipment I had uh, before the dam. Um, obviously uh, technically that means I've got more ammo than I should do because ammo that I used at the dam is now back in my inventory. But to be honest I don't really want to go through the footage and figure out exactly how many bullets I fired uh, at the dam to get rid of that. So um, you know what I've got plenty of spare money at the moment let's just say I went and bought some more or something. Time time travel, time travel, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, all that good stuff. Anyway uh, as I said we are actually going to do the DLC today. We are going to do and do Honest Hearts. But first I need to get myself kitted up a little bit. And that actually brings me back to Novak. I did uh, say last week I was going to be kind of going out of my way to buy a particular gun before we went to Honest Hearts. A few people tried to guess uh, on the subreddit and on Twitter. No one got it actually. Not one person guessed correctly. There's one very important gun for going into Honest Hearts. Hello Cliff. Welcome back. Can I get you anything? You can indeed. Say hello to Paciencia, and I've probably got that wrong because I'm afraid I, I understand that's um, that's supposed to be Spanish, Spanish for patience, but unfortunately I don't speak a word of Spanish, so I'm going to be pronouncing that wrong all of this episode. I apologise in advance. So uh, what I'm going to call Paciencia is the, it's kind of a unique variant of the hunting rifle. So what does it actually do? You'll kind of see there damage is, yeah, damage is 58, DPS 103. It doesn't look that spectacular does it but obviously you're noticing the effects it's also got bonus critical damage and bonus critical chance both of which are very very interesting indeed it also interesting has a rather peculiar weight at 6.2 most weapons don't have kind of fractions for a waste unless they're like really small things like grenades or mines or anything most weapons are whole numbers so i found it's kind of interesting that it's also got a weight of 6.2 anyway let's buy this thing so there we are. That on my back there is uh, Paciencia. My understanding is that it's got the kind of uh, flag of Mexico uh, wrapped around it there. You can just kind of see the uh, the green and the red there, kind of not entirely clearly, but uh, there you go. So why have I gone for this gun? You'll also notice, interestingly, has the disadvantage of having only three shots, only three shots in it, which is not a huge amount whatsoever. Especially as it's got, you know, it's got no scope, it's, you know, it's got a very kind of small, uh, it's going to carry three bullets. It doesn't look initially like a great gun. And just looking at its damage, as we were just saying, 58 damage and 103 DPS is not particularly high. Uh, just so you know, if you see this gun, uh, the base damage will actually be 55. I get some small bonuses from, you know, a couple of little perks I've taken. I think the base damage is actually, uh, is actually 55 off this gun. So it doesn't look very good. But here's the interesting thing about it. That bonus critical damage that you can see there, that bonus critical damage means if I score a critical hit, and indeed obviously a sneak attack critical is covered by that as well, that means this gun's base damage doubles. Actually, um, the base damage that it's actually doing doubles if it scores any form of critical hit. And the thing is, if it doubles, it becomes as powerful as the anti-material rifle which is very, very interesting indeed. So then we got, so what we've got there is we've got a gun that's as powerful as the anti-material rifle. Hey. But John, I hear you say, you've already got an anti-material rifle. What, what's the point of this gun above the anti-material rifle? Well, I'm glad you asked voices in my head. The question that we've actually got here is a question of ammo. 
So let's just have a look at the ammo types available to the anti-material rifle. You've got your base ammo. You've got armor piercing, so against armored enemies, really, really powerful. You've got explosive ammo, which is just kind of really cool. Uh, but, you know, uh, it doesn't kind of get any particularly special bonuses. And you've got the damage over time ammo here. But you'll notice there's something very important missing, which is the, um, the anti-material rifle doesn't have a hollow point ammo variation. It has nothing that gets bonus damage versus uh, versus enemies that have no armor whatsoever or very low armor for example and that's where paciencia comes into the equation because paciencia uses the commoners muck uh, 308 rounds so then you've got the normal rounds of which i've got flipping thousands we've got armor piercing rounds again but we've also got hollow point rounds now that's where life gets interesting because that is a 75 percent increase to damage at the cost of the target's damage threshold being multiplied by three. So let's just put that into my gun there, lovely. So the advantage to that is obviously I'm about to go and do Honest Hearts. And Honest Hearts, the vast majority of the time, the enemies I'll be facing are natural creatures. Um, the Algwai return, there's Cazadors everywhere, there's, you know, there's unique kind of tougher variants of Cazadors and Mantas. There's a lot of wildlife about. So the fact that I now have hollow point ammo means... So, okay, okay. Let's, let's just quickly do the maths here. So the base damage of this gun, when I get a critical hit, goes up to 110. I've got better criticals, so my critical strikes don't just double the base damage, they actually add an extra 50% on top of that too. I've got hollow point ammo in this gun, so that's an extra 75% added on to the base damage as well. And that's before we add on the fact I've taken bloody mess for just increased base damage. I've picked up some of the Lord Death perks, I think I'm up to rank 2 in Lord Death at the moment. All of those things added together. If I get a sneak attack critical with Paciencia loaded with hollow point ammo against anything that has an armor of, or is a damage threshold to be precise, of zero, which every creature in Zion does, this gun will do about 500 damage in one shot. Which is just for reference, enough to one shot any Cazador in the entirety of Zion Valley, even the kind of the giant variants, and would be enough to one shot the flipping legendary Night Stalker if I were to want to. That's how powerful this is. I think, I think, someone run the maths for me if you don't believe me. I think this gun can do the most damage per single shot to an unarmored creature of any gun in the game because the hollow point ammo makes it more powerful at dealing with creatures than the anti-material rifle. I think that is true. So I'm going to be a bit sparing because I haven't got that much hollow point ammo. So I need to be a little bit sparing here. So yes, I feel in very good shape because of that. In fact, I'm going to very quickly go through the big ammo stocking shops like uh, the, uh, the quartermaster at the dam just to get some more hollow point ammo. Okay, that was a pretty uh, good trip. I just managed to get like um, 120 odd hollow point 308 rounds from the quartermaster at the dam. He's always got so much ammo. He's like one of the, I think he's possibly the best place in the entire wasteland for uh, for picking up ammo. He's better than the Great Khan, certainly. He's better than uh, he's better than the Gunrunners too. So that's good. Anyway, uh, I think that is all I want to do in terms of preparation. There's, there's more things I could do, but honestly, I feel like I'm roughly as prepared as I can kind of realistically be. So time to head north. You'll probably notice we're currently to the north of Vegas. This is where we uh, kick off this uh, kick off this DLC. Uh, is this the path to go? Yes, this looks about right. You got behind this, uh, this big building here. I'm going to try and cut out a little bit less than I normally would, by the way. I know I normally kind of cut out a lot of kind of traveling, uh, across kind of the uh, traveling across the waste and so forth But I'm gonna try and avoid doing that this time because I know actually a fair few people or rather a lot less people Have actually played some of the DLC and I know from the comments a fair few people have never seen uh, Certain DLC before so I'm gonna try and show it off a little bit more conclusively So here we are we're kind of uh, outside uh, where we're gonna join up with the happy trails caravan company and uh, Rather lovely. I, fi I find this a nice touch. There's obviously a grave uh, right outside just to, just to add a little bit of sense of foreboding to this happy trails caravan company. It's not just happy trails It's also death, but yes grave 
So here we are inside, and here's the little company that we are joining. Uh, Jed Masterson, who's leading the expedition. Stella, who's just a bodyguard. And Ricky, who's a druggie who's along for the ride because he is holding a Pip-Boy. And Pip-Boys have maps in them. But I have a Pip-Boy too, so I feel he's a little redundant. But uh, Ricky's the person we're going to want to speak to first. Because here's the fun trick about this uh, DLC. Some DLCs take all your weapons off you. Some of them let you keep them. Um, this DLC says because we're going on a very long journey to Zion, you can only hold seven... 75 uh, pounds of equipment. So I'm carrying about 166 pounds at the moment, so I need to get rid of a fair few of my weapons, which is fine, because that just means I can carry all the loot I find in Zion back home, so that's fine. But I can get that up a little bit by speaking to Ricky here. Hey, little lady. Don't be scared to join this caravan. I'll keep a close eye on you. Real close. Promises. Oh, lovely. Thank you very, very much, Ricky. Um, so obviously I want to go down this route. I want to say, tell him that I see he's wearing a Pip-Boy in a vault suit. Nice job, Eagle Eye. And ask about the, uh, Pip-Boy. Jed says it's got maps and shit like that. So that's how I'm gonna guide this caravan where it needs to go. Not that I didn't know all that already. So ask him, did you notice that, of course, I, PG Shoot, am also wearing a Pip-Boy? Huh? Of course I noticed. First thing I noticed about you. And then with either signs of 45, I can tell him the screen's locked up and the reboot button's missing. Or speech of 50, I don't think your pit boy works. I better go tell Jed. So as it's just slightly higher, I'll go for speech. Go ahead. Your word against mine, fucko. See what happens. And I'm convincing. You're not. He'll believe me. Hey, hey, hey. Why you gotta go and be like that? Fuck. Look. This is a sweet gig for me. Don't go fucking it up. What are you after anyway? And carry some of my gear. I'll keep my mouth shut. Fine. I'll tell Jed I'm carrying less so you can carry more. What an asshole. There we go. That's all I want. That's absolutely fine. Goodbye. So, there we go. I can now carry a hundred pounds of equipment. Lovely. And the game provides this rather nice box for putting stuff in. And it can just be safely stored here. So obviously I can't carry my stealth armor, it's a bit pointless, uh, though I like it aesthetically, that's not coming with me. Uh, neither is the Khan Hamid. Oh, that's something I picked up from, uh, sorry, that's something I picked up from gambling. Uh, I'll keep the Lucky Shades. I will try and keep my power armor, which weighs an awful lot. Why have I got, got two sheriff's hats apparently? Interesting. Uh, okay, I'm going to try and keep my power armor, so that's fine. I've cleared out some random stuff I happen to have on me, but I'm going to keep my three stealth boys. Oh, by the way, um, the, re the way I got all that money was I just went and cleared out the casinos. I forgot that the Vicky and Vance Casino, the second tier prize you get from them, is actually a stealth boy. So I'm back up to uh, I'm back up to three stealth boys now, which is good. Now, most importantly, weapons. I don't need to lose a huge amount. I've only got to lose uh, I've only got to lose a further kind of uh, 21 of them, so that's fine. Power Fist can go. I very much doubt. In fact, I know for a fact I'm not going to be kind of trying to sneak kill kind of uh, humans. That's fine. Sniper Rifle. Uh, bleh, should that go? Yeah, Sniper Rifle should go. I don't see any reason I'm going to be using the Sniper Rifle when I've got the Antimateria Rifle. I should probably get rid of that in general. Tesla Cannon can definitely... This machine I should probably just sell, actually, because I see no reason why I'll ever use this machine again now that I've got uh, now that I've got paciente. I mean this machine is technically a lot more powerful I guess but uh, yeah okay we'll get rid of, we'll get rid of the Tesla can anyway and Advancer's machine gun is obviously coming with me that's the best um, high DPS weapon I've got with me right now uh, because again because it's 9mm I can use armor piercing or hollow point rounds in it so if I get stuck in a corner I've got something that works pretty well against all types of enemies Time bombs? I don't even, where did I even get the flipping time bombs from? Sure, time bombs can go. I can't see myself using those. I'm going to keep my mines. I'll keep the C4 and the detonator because in case I need to kind of have a ridiculously big explosion, that could work well. But I'll keep my antimateria rifle because obviously that works against the tribals that will be local. C4 in case you need a big explosions. Paciencia, which is going to be my main weapon against the wildlife. Plasma mines because I love mining stuff up. This machine... Nah, eh, why not? <laughs> that's that's just with me because it's... It, I don't know. That's just with me. Um, and Vance's 9mm submachine gun. I suppose if I'm in an open fight, this thing is... Te no, the thing is I wouldn't use... Not sure if I'd ever use this machine again. I'm going to keep it anyway because I'm, I'm under 100. I'm under 100, so that's fine. So, uh, okay, there we go. Let's speak to uh, Jed Masterson. Howdy, friend. Heard my little broadcast, did you? Yeah, you look the type. 
and obviously I can ask him all about the job and happy trails, but like much DLC in Fallout New Vegas, it's kind of, it goes on a very long time, so I'm not going to make you sit through all the text. Basically, the summary is we're going into Zion Canyon, going to try and find the new Canaanites, uh, who these guys want to trade with. But one thing that does amuse me about this DLC is, if you ask him about the job... The pay is 25 caps per day. Half up front, half on return. You'll get a bonus if we make it into Zion. 25 caps a day. This is, this is, I just, I've got 30,000 caps and I just dropped 12,000 on a rifle. And then I just dropped another 2,000 on plenty of ammo for it. And this guy's offering 25 caps a day. I oh, know, it just doesn't seem appealing to me. And it, it, it's very strange. I mean, is that, is that the going rate in the, in the economy of New Vegas in general? Do people just work for 25 caps a day? Because... Um, I'm trying to think what the price of various items of food is. I guess food is relatively cheap in New Vegas. It's, I don't know what his eyes are doing. His eyes keep kind of wandering off to the side there. That's kind of weird. Um, but yes, and what else can you... Yeah, you can ask him about the caravan, which isn't particularly interesting. Zion is... Well, it, it, it's a big canyon. Yeah, I don't need to go through this. Anyway, let, let's do this. Let's do this. Just like that, huh? <laughs> you got guts. I'll give you that. Well, all right then. Let's get moving. We got a long road ahead of us. And 175 bottle caps added. So as we get half up front, I guess that means it's about a 14 day journey we're supposed to be going on. Anyway, let's crack on and I'll show a little intro cutscene. I think this is the thing many people kind of know already in terms of the legend of Joshua Graham and the Bird Manx. It's hinted at in the base game, but I'll let it play anyway for those of you who've never experienced this game before. A few decades back, folks in the NCR started to hear about a community in Northern Utah called New Canaan. Didn't know much about them, except that they were religious folks, sent out missionaries to talk to the tribes. We've seen our share of cults, but the New Canaanites, they were honest traders. Good fighters, too. Raiders wouldn't tangle with them. But then, the Legion appeared in Arizona. I reckon you know all about them. Turns out Caesar's first war chief, the Malpace Legate, was a new Canaanite, Joshua Graham. Legend goes that Graham was the meanest, toughest son of a bitch in the whole damn legion. The new Canaanites wouldn't talk about him. They were ashamed. Guess I can't blame them. Well, at Hoover Dam, the Malpace Legate finally met his match. Hanlon and Oliver kicked his new Canaanite butt right back over the river. Caesar had to make an example for the others to show them that even at the highest level, failure wouldn't be tolerated. He had Graham covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. People say he didn't even scream on the way down. Not long after, some of the slaves and tribals started to talk, said Graham wasn't dead. Shouldn't have been any surprise. All this talk bothered Caesar. So he forbade anyone from speaking his name. Wanted to erase Joshua Graham from history. He got his wish. Joshua Graham disappeared. And in his place came legends of the burned man walking the wastes. Probably just a tribal ghost story. But New Canaan's been silent for a long time. Maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe the Malpace Legate is dead. Or maybe Joshua Graham did crawl out of that canyon and finally found his way back home. All right, people. Been a long couple of weeks, but here we are. Zion. Yep, there we are. A couple of weeks, as I said. And 50 caps bonus for arriving, like you said. And here we go. Arrival at Zion. We have made it. Zion, I love... It's so... I, I will say now, I love this DLC. Because it looks so different, and it feels so different, and it just it's just very, very different indeed. But but there's no time for talking, because things are about to go very wrong very quickly. So, first thing I'm going to want is anti-material rifle, and the toughest, biggest ammo I can find. Because we are about to be under attack. There we go. Now, there's no point getting involved. I can't help. But I can, however, just snipe off any enemies that show up in the meantime. That's what I can do. I forgot to put ammo on. I'm completely undefended right now. Right, helmet, no. Yes, yes. Okay. I am hidden. 
They kill that guy automatically. Yeah, there's a bit of a set piece battle. My entire company's about to get uh, wiped out, but that's fine. So, oop, yep, he's dead too. Actually, they're doing all right. These guys, these guys are all going to die. I cannot save them. But I can, however, kill the guys that killed them. There we go. So these are the white legs that we're just taking on right now. So this is an ambush that happens automatically at the beginning of the game. And, oh, I've leveled up as well. Excellent, all right. So straight into level 25. You know what, let's get lockpick up to max. I may as well. There's no reason not to kind of just have that uh, ready to go. I'm going to get science up as well. And let's just get explosives moving. Actually, no, let's get energy weapons moving up to a bit of a round number. I do enjoy round numbers. So, level 25, obviously no perk at level 25. I am back into caution, though. Who is still seeing me? To be a bit careful, because though the ambush is kind of nominally over, obviously there are still things happening. So this is how I'm going to be. For most of this DLC, I think, it's going to be uh, the same route that you've seen before. There you go. Yep, the uh, the remnant combat armor, the Type 2 helmet and everything. Now, can I get a good sniper shot down at whoever is left? Because there's going to be, I think, about... There's going to be two. Yeah, there's going to be two left down there. Uh, I should be able to get both of them with a single explosive round, I think. Because the, the, uh, the, ra the radius on this is, yeah, especially if they move close together... Yes, look at that. Two for the price of one. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Well, good job. This is why explosive ammo is great. Um, explosive ammo is going to be particularly good during this DLC because um, this DLC... This DLC is a little bit more guilty than some of them of enemies spawning in little clusters. They'll pop up on cliff sides in like twos and threes. But if I can spot them before they spot me, they'll all be standing together. So kind of that works to my advantage. And let's just rob these guys for everything valuable they've got on. Including taking his belt off him. It's a bit harsh, quite frankly. Uh, Ricky, who, who had a backstory about being a drug fiend and something, something, but I skipped all that. But I'm just going to steal his stuff anyway. Uh, clearly he ran out of drugs because he's only got a stim pack on him. He doesn't have any psycho, but he, he is a psycho fiend. He's got a bit of a habit that needs to be fed. Ah, mines. I do love a good mine, obviously. And a grenade launcher is worth something at least. I may as well just take all this stuff and sell it later. Hunting rifle. Good, I can use that to repair uh, Paciencia when that comes up too. So I think that's all of the guys from the original ambush should now be dead. I think we've got our first two uh, white legs here. These guys actually carry really good guns. They're carrying good quality 10mm uh, submachine guns. They've often got fire axes which are quite valuable. These tomahawks are kind of quite valuable. Those are throwing weapons. Uh, so I may as well kind of take all those again just to sell. I'm just going to try and make some money off this. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of funny that actually literally the first tribal we kill has enough stuff on him that uh, it's more valuable to me. Oh yeah, look at that, a riot flipping shotgun. The first tribal we kill has stuff on him more valuable by several times than anything that I was going to be, uh, than there was anything I was going to earn by actually doing the, uh, the job I've been hired to do. So really, you know, we make more of a profit if rather than actually being a trading company, we just come here, kill two locals, and then just steal stuff off their bodies. And that's it. We are done. Ah, uh, what's that? That's... Ooh! Yep. There you go. That's a good thing right there. Just the, the equipment right here is very valuable, so worth taking all of that. Now, I need to watch this, because there's going to be a guy who, I don't know if he runs up or spawns up there, but... Yeah, I need to be careful of him. I mean, I've got, I mean, I've got high sneak, but here's the thing about the DLC. Sneak kind of stops mattering. Um, enemies in this DLC are insanely perceptive. In fact, enemies in all DLC uh, for Fallout New Vegas are insanely perceptive. <laughs> this guy's got an anti-material rifle. Yeah, I think you're starting to see why this DLC is a bit difficult. Um, because I've come here in my mid-twenties, the enemies are armed to the teeth with really, really good stuff. Uh, are any of these a different, a different guy to the one I just murdered? Because obviously both guys kind of exploded. But never mind. Okay, got to be careful. Is there a gap in the bridge? No, no, there's not. Any minute, someone's going to appear up there. Someone's going to appear up there because I'm on the ridiculously, obviously exposed bridge. I'm just going to... Can I actually walk off this thing? No, I can't. So I can just stay in this... Mo oh! Oh! He hit me. He totally hit me. Yeah, that wasn't so bad because obviously that was a rapid fire weapon and I had my armor on. But that was three hit points of damage, taking me down to 262 out of a maximum of 450. Because I just went up to 450 because I just leveled up. White legs don't leave survivors often. You're some kind of lucky, let me tell you. You came from outside, didn't you? From the civilized lands. 
Wow. Joshua will want to hear about this. This cutscene's a bit weird because obviously he's doing the Fallout New Vegas thing of characters look dead ahead to meet your island. But because he's speaking to me from above, because he's kind of the conversation title while he's upon the rock, it means he's looking straight over my head. Uh, because they didn't kind of change it, so he'd look down at you because you're at a lower level than him. It's uh, kind of unusual. Anyway, obviously Joshua is Joshua Graham, the burned man. Uh, he's the second in command who was mentioned in the intro cutscenes, but uh, yeah, 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 skip through this. So that's my new follower, just for the moment. <laughs> follow who just kind of threw himself off a cliff there. Excellent. Um, so that is follows Chalk. Um, his deal is, as a follower poke, if I go to a high space, it'll let me kind of map out the uh, the area nearby. I'm probably not going to bother for the most part. I just don't think it's that kind of, uh, I don't think it's that useful a thing. I mean, if you were trying to do literally everything and if you wanted to explore absolutely everywhere, I guess there'd probably be good sense to it. But uh, I'm probably not going to be bothering. So the way I'm going to approach this DLC is I'm probably not going to do all the submissions, but... I do have to do an awful lot of missions anyway. There's, there's just doing the main missions is an awful lot of missions in here. So uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to skip the kind of the optional stuff because some of it's very dangerous for not much reward. Anyway, we're now we're past the white legs. I'm pretty sure we should be able to avoid white legs for the rest of the time. So that means it's time to bring up Paciency for the first time. And hollow point ammo goes straight in it too. Now we just kind of creep along here. And in a second, I should be able to show you Paciencia's true power. Freeze, you say? Why is that then? Because of that thing? Because of the giant bear? Oh dear, I seem to have one-shotted it. What have you got to say about that? Nothing, as you should do. Yeah, uh... Even though that was the special giant variant of uh, of the Yagwai, obviously we've just uh, murdered it in a single hit, which is great news. And, oh, here's another new enemy. Um, So the green gecko. This is a new variant of gecko. This new variant of gecko in this valley is vastly more dangerous than the traditional one, but we will get to why as we come to him. So we've got a choice now. We can either go the long way around or the direct route through the mountains. I'm going to go the direct route through the mountains. We are trying to find the dead horses camp. Oh, is this a bit of bear? Yes, it is. Bit of bear. Yes, I'll take that. I'll be able to sell that later. Good, good, good. Bear meat is valuable meat. So... This DLC. Actually, you know, let's, let's let's go a little bit round the long way, just because I want to kind of go and, and show off the view for people who kind of uh, never experienced this DLC before. I really like this DLC. In some ways, this is this probably isn't my favourite DLC. I think more of my favourite DLC has to be Old World Blues. But just I love the way this DLC looks and feels and is different. The fact that you know Fallout New Vegas is. Is very, you know, it, this colour scheme is very different and the way it's all laid out. The fact that it's suddenly very vertical with these big cliffs and big ridges to stand on. That's all kind of very different to uh, to how it is elsewhere. I just think it's lovely. It's a really nice change of pace. It looks different. It feels different. It is very different because all of a sudden there's, there's kind of wildlife that's really dangerous absolutely everywhere. Which is kind of an again an, a really nice change of pace as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, it's it's just a it's just a lovely bit of DLC. And yeah, I'd, maybe I prefer Old World Blues to this as my favourite bit of New Vegas DLC, but it's just beautiful. Anyway, we're going to head over this mountain, and if we're lucky, we should avoid running into any more trouble. If we do run into trouble, the trouble we run into should be creatures, in which case I should be able to one-shot any of it as long as I see it before it sees me. This DLC unnerves me an awful lot, by the way, because there's huge amounts of time where, yeah, you'll just see things. Ah, a cub! Oh, I probably just killed your mum! Then this, this is the kind of way. This is the kind of way. Yalgwai Hunter killed uh, 10 Yalgwai. Apparently that's an achievement. Will I go for that? I don't know. I'll probably be avoiding bears to the extent that I won't bother getting up to 10. Um, I think I've run into some in a quest later. But I doubt I'll kind of have any reason to kind of come up to uh, to 10. But yes, this, uh, this gun, this gun is pretty damn amazing at taking out the wildlife. So now I've got this, I should be in very good shape. Yes, very good shape, I say. As I obviously, you know... Flipping, uh, I've already taken uh, three hit points damage just in the little opening kind of baby quest in the game. 
Uh, interesting thing about this quest as well is um, there's while there's loads of wildlife dotted around Zion Valley, not all of it is hostile. Um, there's a very large number of just large dogs around, which are kind of perfectly friendly. You can't interact with them in any way. They just kind of potter about and they don't do anything. I guess if you had Animal Friend level 2, they'd come to assist you in fighting. And incidentally, uh, this DLC is the DLC where Animal Friend would be absolutely invaluable. But I, I never get Animal Friend because Animal Friend means, I think it's um, Charisma 6 and Survival 45. And I don't want to have spend 6 special points on Charisma and I don't want to spend 45 skill points on Survival because generally they're pretty useless. So yeah, I don't know, I just find it's not very useful to do that. But uh, yeah, because uh, the uh, because that perk affects the Yaogwai, that would be very useful for this. Obviously it would also be useful to have the wild dogs uh, help you uh, in combat. You'll notice obviously heads on spikes here. This I think is a very nice touch because obviously um, the story here, just in case you kind of, uh, to give you the very brief version, is Joshua Graham, of course, you, used to be a new Canaanite, joined the Legion and became uh, the first kind of legate who was burned by Caesar, then returned to the new Canaanites to make them much better. Or rather, sorry, um, he returned to... Uh, he returned to New Cain Knights and joined up with the dead horses and made them much better at fighting and defending themselves against the white legs. And he uses some of the um, the kind of the um, forms of intimidation and warfare that the Legion use, like heads on spikes. And uh, also, uh, just to note, hollow logs often contain stuff. That one's not valuable enough for me to bother with. Excellent. And we have reached the first little thing that we want to reach. So the Zion Valley Welcome Booth, which is lovely. In here, rather unique item, which is kind of worth having a look at. Uh, the Park Ranger Hat, which grants plus five survival, which is, uh, I think it's one of the very few items in the game that provides a survival boost. Just because, I don't know, I really feel like they could have done more with survival. Maybe if you're playing, like, hardcore mode, survival would be good. But I've played through hardcore mode before, and I don't think survival is even that necessary for that, quite frankly. Because it's really easy to scavenge food without having to do any of that business but uh okay we've kind of got that and we've got this fast travel location so now we just head down here into the river fortunately um as far as i'm aware not a single water source in zion is irradiated so ooh, hello no no you're a friend you're a friend you're fine don't don't kill you so that's the dead horses uh dead horses are friendlies they're friendly tribals but uh, friendly tribals who are, however, capable of fighting back. They're not exactly a warlike tribe, but Joshua Graham has trained them to be a bit more warlike than they were. But they're constantly under attack from the White Legs. And the White Legs deal is they want to join up with Caesar. And Caesar said to them, wipe out the new Canaanites if you want to join the Legion. And the reason he's said that is because, uh, obviously, he basically wants Joshua Graham to die. Because Joshua Graham was supposed to have died in the first place. And Caesar doesn't like dead people being alive. And probably just because the burned man is kind of a quite a powerful... Quite a powerful psychological weapon against Caesar. The idea that there's this guy that Caesar kind of tried to betray and kill to make a point. The fact that guy survived makes him quite fearsome and potentially powerful anti-Legion symbol. So now we just need to head down here through this river. There are bear traps along here, but luckily I obviously already took the uh, I already took the flipping uh, light step perk uh, to my great disadvantage apparently. So I couldn't uh, set these off if I wanted to. But uh, as I'm passing over them, obviously I can disarm them for how much experience is it? Yeah, whole two experience point. Excellent. I uh, need to be very careful though. I do not want to uh, drink. I don't want to drink because I don't want to regain any. Uh, I don't want to regain any health accidentally. The reason for that, by the way, is because for those of you who don't know, you can actually verify what your um, what how much health you've regained from uh, your stats in your Pit Boy. So you can see that I've had zero health from stim packs, zero health from food, zero water consumed, all of that good stuff. So I can kind of I can prove that I haven't been kind of quietly taking stim packs off camera or anything like that. So anyway, we crack onwards, setting off these crappy traps, though obviously I can do a little dance on the traps and uh, nothing happens. What if you can actually lead him into them? Not sure if you can lead him into them or not. I assume he won't walk into his own traps, but... Uh, oh, red. Red, yeah. This game unnerves me because this canyon, you will see red all over the shop, which is, I think, supposed to be on top. But as long as you stay hidden, it pretty much will never find you. So I'm just going to... Just stay quiet and just let the red pass. But that's something that happens in this DLC an awful lot, which is you'll see red in your compass marker, but you can't find it because normally um, in Fallout, the environment's quite open and wide and so forth. So you've got a pretty good line of sight in every direction. In this DLC, that all changes because there's a lot of rocks in the way and things are on top of... Uh, 
things are on top of cliffs and behind little rock formations. So you'll very often see things. So you see the compass markers for things, but you can't actually do anything about them. Now, can I lead you into this trap? Do you want to walk through the trap? No, he's got he's clearly got light step as well, because he doesn't set off his own traps either. Let's just disarm it. I'm not screwing them over, by the way, because obviously these traps to keep out the white legs. So by turning off all their traps, I'm not uh, doing them any harm whatsoever. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect them in any way, because the white legs never attack this camp. Here's another red compass marker that I can't see or do anything about. I think I, th I hope think the game like did that intentionally just to kind of freak you out a little bit. If so, it works quite nicely. Anyway, I think we're pretty safe at this point, so I'm just going to run ahead into the camp. And here we are in the Dead Horses camp at Eastern Virgin. There's not much here, to be honest. The um, the camps are not that interesting. I do like the fact there's fish in the water, by the way. Do they actually actively hunt the fish? Uh, this woman, I suppose, is like supposed to be looking like she's uh, spear fishing. She's wandering around in the water with a spear. I'm not sure she actually has an animation to attack a fish. Let's just check if she does. Is she going after a particular fish? You know, attack a fish? You can go for No. Fish just walked straight in front of her and she didn't care. So again, in what I think is a very nice little touch from a lore perspective, if you wander through the camp, you'll see uh, people kind of doing press-ups over and over and over, and you'll see these two people sparring against each other in kind of pairs, practicing attacking and blocking and countering and so forth. And, like, if it looks familiar to you, people running up and down hills and doing press-ups and fighting, it's because the, basically the animations are incredibly similar to what you find in the Legion camp. You'll also find Legionaries doing press-ups and running up and down hills and sparring in pairs there as well. And you don't really find it in the, uh, you don't really find it at all in the NCR camps. That's something that you find pretty much exclusively in the Legion camps. It's just another sign that Joshua Graham has taken what he's learned from the Legion and applied it to these tribals. Which is, I don't know, I, I think it's cool personally. So anyway, we step inside here. Auslander Zuka, Joshua Graham. And as you can see, um, the dead horses speak a kind of blend of English and something else. I'm not sure what the other thing's supposed to be. But uh, with intelligence of seven, I can understand what she's trying to say. You know our tongue. Smart, Auslander. Joshua I'm assuming it's I supposed to be like a variant of Outlander, i.e. someone from not from around here. Joshua is greatest warrior. You show him no respect, he show you thunder and fire. Which I guess means he will shoot me, um, I'm supposing. Uh, so I'll be on my best behaviour. Lovely. So we've got this nice cave here. Uh, fun thing to note is you've got cave fungus around that you can just pick. Cave fungus, if you are healing, is a remarkably good item because it uh, also reduces rats. It's one of the few natural items in the world that reduces rats. But anyway, let's head on and actually meet up with Joshua Graham, the burned legate himself. But take all this stuff, because it's actually quite valuable. And I think you can hopefully sell it uh, straight back to the tribe in a second, I think. But if you are healing, it's a good item, especially if you're in rads. But to the best of my knowledge, I think there's a single thing that causes rads in this entire DLC. So you should be fine on that front. But anyway, here he is, Joshua Graham, the burned man. We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear... The White Legs beat us to it. White Legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting, but I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. So obviously a hint there of uh, Ulysses, who will be kind of coming up again and again in the various DLCs I do as far as I get. So uh, first little hint to him that we've kind of come across really, aside from those in the main game, because obviously there's, uh, there's mentions of him in the main game too. But uh, something that always bugs me about Joshua Graham, his mouth is really clearly bandaged up. The bandages clearly cover his mouth, yet he his speech isn't obstructed or mumbled at all, despite the fact he's clearly had his mouth bandaged. Of course, he's entirely bandaged up because he was burnt he was set on fire so presumably there's an awful lot of scar tissue underneath the bandages but I just find it really weird how he just speaks in this kind of deep normal badass voice when it's pretty clear his mouth has been bandaged over his chin interestingly is exposed but not his mouth so anyway, let's tell him about what I actually came here to do at the happy trails caravan company looking for the new Canaanites happy trails I remember they were good friends I have bad news for your employers New Canaan was destroyed, its citizens scattered, all because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the New Canaanites, almost assuredly because of me. 
The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other new Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now. Not with everything that's going on. So these guys claim that they can help me get home, but first I need to help them. Fair enough. I'm not going to do without offering to help. What can I do, Joshua Graham? Daniel and I need pre-war tools to help us navigate beyond Zion. Should we need to evacuate, these instruments will be vital to us. So they need me to collect some stuff from around. I will see what I can do. And an easy, nice 400 experience there. Arrival at Zion is complete. Lovely. And tourist trap begins in its place. I, I know, every time I see these, I kind of uh, I get a bit confused because I have a bit of a Skyrim moment. Every time I see these, I have an immediate urge to go find an animal, skin it, and then start turning it into leather and leather straps. Oof, deep, deeply concerning. Anyway, uh, we can also do one thing. You've noticed we picked up three quests there. But if we speak to Joshua Graham again. So Joshua Graham will act as a shop for me, which is good. Um, he's really big on his kind of, uh, yeah, he's kind of really big on his uh, weapons, the uh, the auto machine guns, and the, basically the .45 the .45 weapons. He's really really keen on the the pistol is actually pretty darn good. The pistol is pretty darn good, but I can't think of a scenario I'd be using it because I can certainly, you know, outdo uh, 50 damage, 89 DPS. The machine gun again is pretty good, but I think I can just about outdo that with what I've already got. Yeah, two four six. Versus, actually no, it is better. Actually, you know, it is better than Vance's 9mm submachine gun. So maybe I'll keep hold of this, uh, even though I don't have much ammo for it. How much does ammo cost for this thing? Yeah, the problem is I'm not going to be able to have much ammo for it yet. So I will probably clear him out of this ammo just in case. I'll take a fair whack of it, but uh, yeah, and I'll take I'll take all of this too. I've got plenty of money, and I'm not going to need much of it more at this point. So I'm going to get lots of money. From doing all of this, so that's fine. Uh, meanwhile, stuff I have to sell them. Obviously, I've got to get rid of these 10 millimeter machine guns that are much worse than uh, than the 45 machine gun, so I can sell him back those. Okay, so now I've got myself uh, one of the machine guns, the local, that turns out to be pretty good. And I can also mod it. I've picked up the mods as well, so you know, why not, quite frankly. So that's pretty good, but I won't be necessarily be using it uh, all the time. I'll be sticking with Paciencia as my main weapon, and maybe change that as a secondary weapon. Obviously, I can significantly improve it yet, because it's not great condition. I don't want to pay 4,000 caps for Joshua Graham to repair it, so hopefully I'll pick up something off a corpse of a tribal, and we'll be good from that alone. So, okay, I think the next thing to do is, unfortunately, follows Chalk. I think me and you are done, sorry. What can I tell you? Uh, how you're going home, because unfortunately, I like to do this without companions, because your perk isn't that good, and I don't want you aggroing against anyone else. And he's returned to the Dead Horses camp, and given me a bunch of stuff that he was carrying. So, including some anti-venoms, which is good. Uh, and yeah, uh, poison's a problem around here. I need to be uh, very much watching out for that. Okay, good, good, good. Right, I think I'm going to call it a part there for now, as I suspect when I edit this down, this is actually going to be quite long because I want to show all the story bits off. So next time we're going to get into Zion properly. Uh, just so you know how this quest actually works, um, it kind of works like the Brotherhood quest, actually, insofar as each main quest, uh, you're given three things to do, and you pretty much have to do all three of them. So in the quest log, you'll now see we've gained Roadside Attraction, Gone Fishing, and Tourist Trap. And I have to complete all three of those before I'm allowed to move on to the next main section. So basically, three little sub-quests, then the next quest comes available. And that next quest will also involve three little sub-quests. Also, Petty Gripe, this DLC doesn't have its own loading screens. Like Fallout 3 when you went to DLC, they had their own loading screens, which I quite liked. But unfortunately, yeah, it just doesn't. It just doesn't in this game, which I find really annoying. So yeah, there we are. I think that's enough for that point. It's a sunny, lovely day in Zion. Zion's weather's a little bit temperamental and changeable. Hopefully we'll get to show that off very soon in the next part. But uh, there we are. Next time we will crack into Zion properly. And I think that is very cool indeed. But before I go, hello! Hello to all you new people, because this last week we've gained a whole bunch of new people, because uh, this run got a whole bit of attention from a few different sources, so, you know, thank you to the uh, various publications. 
that uh, were willing to kind of give us a bit of a shout out. It is much appreciated. And welcome to all the new people. In case you're new and uh, haven't been around very long, I've been doing Fallout on this channel for two years, various different runs. So uh, in case you're interested in following a little bit more Fallout, if you've been enjoying this run so far, uh, the other things that I've done that I'm probably best known for is I did Fallout 3, Kill Everything, where I literally killed everything in Fallout 3. And I did the same thing in Fallout New Vegas as well. And finally, we've previously tried to 100% complete the Fallout New Vegas base game without killing anyone, with zero kills, the no-kill absolute pacifist run, uh, which I thought was very enjoyable as well. So annotations on screen for all three of those uh, runs right now, in case you happen to be interested in following a little bit more of the stuff that we do. But yes, there we are. Hello, welcome to everyone new. And uh, next time on Fallout New Vegas, you only once, we will be picking up this DLC a little bit further, but in the meantime, I've been John, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been Fallout New Vegas, you only live once, the arrival to Zion. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Down, 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 get off it. Just hop off. Oh, oh, oh no, oh that was wrong! I would untie and save you, you understand, but there is a hovercraft. I really hope the bear's not still around. The bear is still around! The bear's still around! The bear's still around! Good news, guys! Elephants here! Hey!